Picture this, you're running hard, pushing to your limit, but all of a sudden your legs start feeling heavy, your muscles are burning, and no matter how hard you want it, your body just says no. Now, what if I told you there was something you could use that could delay that moment in a race? It's something that elite athletes and even Olympic medalists have been using to make their legs feel fresher for longer. It's called bicarbonate loading, and while it's been a game changer for some athletes, it's not without its downsides. So in this video, we've got our very own molecular biologist and tutor Let Seca, and he's going to break down exactly what his experience with bicarbonate loading has been like. What it is, how it works, and will it actually work for everyday ordinary runners like you and me. Then we'll break it all down to find out whether it should be something you add to your training or something you can leave behind. All right, and tutu, let's start with the basics. What is bicarbonate loading and why do some runners swear by it? Can you break it down in a way that makes sense for us ordinary runners? Okay, so in order to operate optimally, our bodies need to maintain a stable environment when conditions, even when conditions outside change. This includes things like temperature, blood sugar levels, and in your pH. So our body cells work at an optimum pH, so this is very, very important for maintaining normal metabolic functioning. Bicarbonate is part of the body's normal system of maintaining pH, and it basically, it, it works by buffering these, uh, what are called hydrogen ions that get released and that reduce the pH and cause what's called acidosis. So bicarbonate, as I said, is part of the body's normal tools for maintaining pH balance. And when we exercise, this increased activity actually causes the release of waste products. And one of these waste products is hydrogen ions, which, says, as I said, reduce the pH and cause acidosis. At low and moderate intensities of exercise, your body is very, very good at basically removing these hydrogen ions out of the system. But as we increase the intensity and run harder and harder and harder, we produce these waste products and the hydrogen ions at a rate that our body can't keep up. So by loading with bicarbonate, we're essentially enhancing the system and improving its efficiency and hopefully prolonging your exercise and reducing that delay to fatigue. So Ntutu, you've actually tested this yourself. What was your experience like and did you actually feel a real difference in your training sessions? So I used the gel system where the sodium bicarbonate is mixed in with the gel and it actually looks a little bit like jelly. So you dissolve the gel in water and then you just then you add the sodium bicarbonate to um, to the gel and mix it in. The idea is that you're supposed to eat it and it really does look like jelly. It's a little bit thicker than normal jelly. Um, it is tasteless, a little bit sweet, but you still can't mistake that you are taking in the sodium bicarbonate. And the idea is that you take it in two hours or so before activity and you have to allow it to absorb. You take it with a meal um, just to make sure that there's no disturbance and that you don't get any sort of issues around absorption and into the run itself. So I use it for my interval sessions and essentially the system how it works is that it benefits you when you do high intensity exercise. So it, it has been shown in the research that for when you're working at very high intensity, so very, very close to your VO2 max, and for short races that last between 90 seconds and 12 minutes, and intervals of the same length, that's where it works. So I used it for a whole bunch of different interval sessions that I was doing in December. I used it for threshold type work and for three minute to five minute intervals that I was doing. What I did find was that when I used it, I was actually able to continue exercising. I didn't feel, in the beginning, I f it, 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 doesn't re it doesn't reduce the difficulty when you start running. But what I found was towards the end of the sessions, I was still able to continue and hit my splits without feeling like I was tired. And afterwards, I didn't feel as wiped as I did before. Now, I don't know if this is an actual real effect or is it me knowing that I was taking the bicarbonate, so kind of like a placebo effect. But overall, I'd say, Within training, the experience was quite positive. Team Tutu, that is super interesting. But I, I guess the, the real question that we're all wanting to know is, did it actually make you faster? So as I said, during these sessions, so I had sessions which I knew that I'd done before. Unfortunately, I couldn't test it um, in a race situation, and we'll get to that later, because there were other issues. There are negative side effects to bicarbonate, which have been discussed in the literature. And I think we'll get more into detail about that um, as we keep talking. But I found that during the sessions themselves, it was a really, really positive experience. So as I said, I did sessions which I knew I'd done before, that I knew how they felt, how hard I'm supposed to be working and how fast I was doing them to sort of have a benchmark of performance. And I can definitely say without a doubt that I did feel like I was working better and I was stronger for the duration of the sessions and I didn't have any fade outs. And often when you get to the end of an interval session, you get to this point when you're a little bit tired and you almost find yourself slowing down and having to speed up when you're doing the intervals. And again, I don't know if this is a real effect or a placebo effect, but I found when I used it, I was able to maintain a consistent, strong effort throughout all of my sessions without feeling as wiped as I did before. And the other thing that is really, really positive was the recovery afterwards. And I think that's one of the things that we 
um, that we underestimate about exercise is that when you run hard at interval training, the recovery is impacted. And I found that the next day after doing these interval sessions that I felt still as strong as possible and it didn't affect my easy runs the day after as I was used to. And again, this might be a placebo effect, but that's definitely what I took out of it. Okay, and Judy, that sounds really positive, but there were a couple of things that happened that probably weren't ideal, and one of those are, are the GI issues. Is there any way that runners could avoid this problem when it comes to GI issues and bicarb loading? So this was this is something that's mentioned often in the literature is that when people take bicarbonate, um, it disrupts uh, it disrupts um, your stomach, uh, and part of it is that it messes with pH. While it helps reduce pH in um, in your blood and helps with exercise, your stomach is um, an acidic environment. So when you add bicarbonate, you're essentially uh, making your stomach less acidic, which might not be good for you. And what I found was really, really just very, very uncomfortable from the get-go. And I took the, jo the jaws. It was very, very hard to get down. And the first time I took it, I felt very, very nauseous to begin with. And, um, and during the warm-up of my session, I found that I had to go to the toilet twice. And that's not a very pleasant thing to have to go to. So, and this is part of the reason why I didn't use it for a race later on was because I didn't want to risk getting to a race, having taken the bicarbonate and needing to find toilets. I used um, the bicarb four times in the space of a month. And I found every single time this happened to me constantly. I'd take it and within half an hour, I'd start feeling a little bit nauseous. Um, I'd have to visit the toilet quite often. As I said, I had to stop during my sessions in the warm-up and once in the cool-down. And then when I got home, it would still be the same thing. And this happened every single time. Um, so it's a very, very uncomfortable feeling. And I'm not sure if it's a positive thing that someone wants to go through that every time you take something, even if it is improving performance, that you're having to deal with these issues while you're running. Okay, so the first thing could be a major problem. Can you tell us what it was like and whether you think it could actually affect your performance during a race? So another side effect of the bicarbonate, and you take it as sodium bicarbonate, so it's got a salt uh, bound to it, to bound, to the, bound to the bicarbonate, is that it increases thirst. And I actually didn't expect this, and I didn't realize how intense it would be. So having read about the GI issues, I knew that was something to watch out for. And so when I had those, it was something that I I'd expected to deal with. But the thirst, it, it almost felt like on a very, very hot day when you've been out for a long run, and if you think about how you feel at the end of a run when you're thirsty and no matter how much you're drinking, you just don't seem to get um, hydrated. That's what it felt like. And and they do advise that when you do take the bicarbonate, you should be taking in water constantly. But the first time I didn't take enough water, I took about half a liter of water in between um, the two hour window from when I took it and plus started doing my training sessions. The next couple of times I was a little bit more conscious of taking in water, but it just never ever took the feeling of thirst away. Your mouth feels dry and it feels parched. And then when you start running, it is this constant feeling that you need to be taking in water all the way through the run. And again, like with the GI issues, this for me is a very, very negative feedback message. And when you're trying to run hard, and training is a little bit fun because you you can stop and you can, you know, you can stop and take water. But if you're running a race and this is the feeling that you're having to contend with, it can become something very, very uncomfortable that can result in a negative feeling for you as an athlete. It might impact your performance. Okay, now that we know all that in Tutu, would you recommend bicarb to other runners? And if so, who do you think would actually benefit the most from bicarb loading? So for me and my experiences, this is a hard sell. And I know there are reports of athletes running 5K and 10K races and using it all the way up to ultra runners. So Killian Jornet, the very famous ultra runner who has won UTMB and, uh, and Western States, has used it for his ultra running. And it's interesting because the science shows that it benefits mostly runners running middle distance events. So those are 800 meter races and mile and maybe up to 3000 meters. As I said, it's events that are longer than about um, 30 seconds. It doesn't really help for sprints. So it helps for events lasting about 90 seconds and all the way up to about 12 minutes. But you do have people using it for longer distances, even though the evidence doesn't support it. And the idea is that when you have in races where you are constantly changing gears and having to accelerate and decelerate, that you are going to produce, uh, that acceleration is going to go to a high intensity and that will produce more of these hydrogen ions and lead to fatigue. So the bicarb can certainly help with that aspect. And for ultra runners, when you're running long uh, trail races and going with massive elevation gain, when you're running up a hill, you are using more energy. So it can be beneficial from that perspective. So those are the things to consider and that but I think for the average amateur runner, we are going to be time trialing. We're running even pace, um, and we're not really racing other people, we're racing ourselves. And when you look at the issues that 
come with the system, uh, the GI distress, um, the thirst, the nausea, you've got to be asking yourself, is that worth the benefit, potential benefits, are they worth the cost that you might have to deal with these issues? And also the gain might be very, very minimal. So you're looking at, they say, 1% to 3% gain. Is that worth it, even if you're going to potentially deal with other issues? The other things that is a very, very expensive thing to incorporate into your routine. Um, some of these systems work up to about $15 um, dollars a shot, essentially, for one session. Um, some are cheaper, some a little bit more. So again, you've got to ask yourself, is it worth the money to spend all of that money for using the system if you might be getting 1% to 3%? My general feeling is that for us as amateur runners, we're going to get our benefits elsewhere. Um, I spoke about recovery. Recovery is a very key thing that I found the biocarb helped. But we can actually work on recovery ourselves by being, paying very close attention to our nutrition, doing the right things in training, like running at the correct intensities. Don't run your easy runs too hard. Don't do your intervals at a pace that's way too fast for what you can manage. Work on strength training. Strength training is a very, very good way to build your muscle endurance and help deal with fatigue. And the most key component, of course, is sleep. So if you're getting all of these things together and you're doing all of the right things, um, that is far more beneficial for you now as an amateur athlete than having to spend money on these things. Biocarb is kind of one of those 1% things where once you've optimized everything else and you've reached a level of um, where you've optimized and you can't find improvements in other factors, it might be a thing that you can add as long as you're able to counter all the negative effects and you're happy to pay the cost for it. So is Biocarb the silver bullet for most runners? Probably not, but there are some runners that it's making a huge difference to key workouts and races. If you're a runner over 50, the thing that's going to have the biggest impact is dialing in your training, strength training, and recovery. And that's exactly what we're going to cover in our upcoming Fast to Beyond 50 Masterclass. If you click on the link on screen right now or scan the QR code, we'll show you how to recover from sessions faster so that you don't feel fatigued all the time, so that you're able to run pain and injury-free for years to come.